living organism needs to go through the following basics, for example, like responding to stimuli, reproduction, growth and development, and maintenance of homeostasis. Reproduction and growth and development, for example, requires that cell divide. So take, for example, growth and development, for as you grow from a baby into an adult, your body cell starts to divide and multiply, and as the number increases, then that's how you grow and develop. Cell division is very important for a living organism. It's responsible for reproduction, growth and development, and also tissue renewal. For tissue renewal, every day the cells in our body die. So it's very important that we're able to renew the dead cell with new cells. That's when cell division comes in. Cell division comes in two parts, mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is for the body cells, whereas meiosis is for the sex cells. The human body has 46 chromosomes, that's 23 pairs. In mitosis, your cells grow and divide. You start with 46, but even after division, you still have 46 chromosomes. Every day, your cell goes through what is called a cell cycle. Inside the cell cycle, the cells simply grow and then divide. That's about it. So your cell cycle happens within one day. In a cell cycle, it's divided into two types of phases. One is called the inner phase, the other one is called the meiotic phase. In the inner phase, your cell is simply growing and replicating the chromosome. In the meiotic phase, your cell, that's where all the division takes place. Most of the learning is going to be based on the meiotic phase because that's where all the action takes place. Whereas during the inner phase, it's pretty much kind of boring, even though it's majority of the cell cycle, but it's not focused as much. Uh, just think of it like as if pharmacist versus policeman, you know, even though pharmacist makes a lot of money and stuff, the job's kind of boring. So how many movies do you know that made about pharmacists? Not that many, right? Compared to policemen, see, there's a lot of action going on. That's why there's a lot of movie made about policemen. So think of it the meiotic phase as because where says all the action takes place, we're going to focus most of the learning is going to base on that. Whereas with the inner phase, it's just simply a very simple slow phase, but it's one of the longest phases in the cell cycle. The inner phase is divided into three phases, G1, S, and G2. G1 and G2 stands for gap. During G1, the cell starts to grow. From the tiny little cell, it starts to grow more and more. And then during the S phase, DNA starts to replicate or synthesize, which is what the S stands for, synthesis. During G2 phase, the cell is getting ready to divide. So even though G1 and G2 stands for gap, but it's easier if you think of G1 as stands for growth because that's where all the growth is happening and G2 is getting ready. Inner phase occurs on average about 23 hours. So basically your cells grow and replicate during the 23 hours. And so you can guess of course the meiotic phase happens for one hour, which happens to be a whole cycle of a day. So technically during the day your cell is always continuously growing and dividing. In the meiotic phase it's divided into two other phases. One is mitosis and the other one is cytokinesis. Now make a note cytokinesis is not part of mitosis. Then inside mitosis there's four other phases. In mitosis the four phases are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In short, just remember PMAT. So in interphase G1, the cell starts to grow. S, the cell replicates the DNA. G2, the cell is getting ready. Then we go into prophase of mitosis. In prophase, some of the most important things are the nuclear membrane starts to break down. The chromatin coil and condense into chromosome, and the meiotic spindle begins to form. After prophase comes metaphase. Metaphase is simply the chromosomes line up, and then the spindle fiber attaches to each of the centromere of the chromosome. Metaphase is really easy phase; it's just line up, so you have no problem remembering that. In anaphase, that's when the chromosomes start to split up. Then in telophase, the chromosome has completed splitting up and there's a cleavage furrow which is a small division in the cytoplasm that starts to form, but it's not complete. Finally, after mitosis is followed by cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is when the cell completely splits apart. But remember, cytokinesis is not part of mitosis. 
it's a separate phase. Prophase, the word pro Latin is for before, so it's a before phase. Metaphase, meta is from the word, for example, like metamorphosis. Morphosis being form and meta change, changing form. So a metaphase is, is a change phase. Not exactly sure how that relates to the lining up, but it's basically, I'm guessing it's just a change phase different from the prophase. And then anaphase, the word ana means up, like the word anatomy. Tommy means cut and ana means up. So anatomy is to cut up a person, the study of cutting up a person. And anaphase is an uh, up phase. It's when they are splitting up. In the human body, there are 46 chromosomes. So during interphase, when a cell replicates, the number of chromosomes increase to 92. During mitosis, the cell split into two identical daughter cells. Therefore, it goes back to 46. Therefore, mitosis is part of the body cell division. So every cell in your body has the same amount of chromosome. That's why forensic DNA, it's easy for them to identify matching DNA simply because every cell in your body has the same number of chromosome. So you can take any part of your body, your hair, your skin, your nails, even your saliva, the DNA will still match and be exactly the same. So how many phases are there in mitosis? There are four phases. Which two phases are opposite of each other? The two different phases is prophase and telophase. The opposite of each other. In prophase, the nuclear membrane starts to break down and the chromosomes start to condense. Whereas during telophase, the nuclear membrane starts to reform and the chromosomes start to break apart into chromatin.